Hi, everyone. Look, last week I shared the first of four encouragements to generous giving and I uh, encourage you to watch them and read them together. They're, they're all about how we might support our people and our property commitments joyfully. Uh, we're primarily aiming to cover our staff and our mission costs from the offertories that we receive as a church. And secondly, we want to cover our property needs from the property income that we get and the special appeal that we have each year for, or from time to time. And part of the reason for communicating with you is we're not actually doing that as well as we could. And our property income and our reserves have been bailing us out for too long. Hence, these encouragements. So last week, I mentioned that we put people before property at our church. We still have a big property to care for. We've got two sites to look after. And we've got some exciting building plans for developing our property with the Anglican Church Growth Corp that the Parish Council and I will share later in the year that are responsible, forward-looking and exciting. The reality is only about 25% of the earners at our church provide 90% of the offertory. So we need to engage the spectators to become partners, to broaden the base of support, because if everyone gives faithfully, we can do everything we want to do and more. And our, at our AGM, we increased our combined budget by 80,000, and at present, we're about 35,000 behind. As we saw on Sunday, our giving is a reflection of what God's grace means to you. In the Old Testament, you might be familiar with God's outward command to give back a tenth of what was received, or this is sometimes called the tithe. The law said, be sure to set aside a tenth. Uh, to the Levites, you must present a tenth. The law requires a tenth from the people. These are the sort of things that the Bible says. Now, of course, this tithe giving didn't prove that people were converted. As Jesus said, you Pharisees give a tenth, but you have neglected the more important matters. I give a tenth, said the proud Pharisee in Luke 18. You see, in the New Testament, the tenth is superseded by inward grace. Grace bursts the legal wineskins. Set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, says the Apostle Paul. Jesus says, she out of her poverty put in all that she had. I give back half, I pay back four times. And their overflowing joy welled up in rich generosity, to the Apostle Paul. See, there's three stewardship principles we learned at the Greenhouse Weekend Inn. Firstly, we aren't the owners. We're God's stewards managing his resources for his purposes. Secondly, it's right to pray for and receive our daily bread, our basic needs, and to enjoy the blessings God provides. Thirdly, if we have more than our basic needs, we steward the surplus primarily for the kingdom. You see, good intentions aren't good enough. We need to be faithful. We need to make a plan. In other words, a budget. Now, a budget is simply purposefully splitting the pie. You know, spending has a purpose for our basic needs and other things that we value. Secondly, giving has a purpose for the beneficiaries of our giving to give thanksgiving to God. Thirdly, savings has a purpose to meet our needs and priorities in the short to medium term without going into debt. Fourthly, investing has a purpose, that is to meet our needs and priorities in the longer term future, utilizing cash and non-cash instruments. And if we increase one piece of the pie, that can't happen without reducing another. So I want to encourage you to consider taking some time this week to prayerfully make a kingdom-centred budget using the comparison model. And uh, there's a spreadsheet you can download, a template um, from the guys at Thesaurus. What's the comparison model? Well, firstly, start with budgeting for your daily bread expenses, your rent, your mortgage, your food, your utilities, your transport to work, etc., etc. Then think about the necessities that you have to save for, replacing a car sometime in the future an emergency fund if you lose your job or something like that. Thirdly, put uh, in the other discretionary entertainment expenses, the Netflix, the coffees out. And with your budget um, for that, compare it to your giving. Does it seem right? Does it reflect a belief that God is the most important thing in your life? As you do the comparison, make adjustments. You see, how much should you give? Well, the comparison model is helpful because it helps you to plan to give generously, to thank God, to prosper the work of the word. You're not under law to give a tenth, and you're not under law to give less than a tenth. But notice that under law, those at our church who are receiving 10,000 net a year would give 1,000 or $83 a month. Those receiving 100,000 net a year would give 10,000 or 833 a month. Those receiving 500,000 net a year would give 50,000 or 4,167 a month. Everyone's circumstances are different, which is why the comparison model helps us. And under grace, some will give more. What does your giving say? 
about God's grace to you. God bless.